This is a video in clinical medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. Infection associated with healthcare is the most common adverse event affecting hospitalized patients. Hand hygiene is the most important preventive measure against these infections, but compliance with this simple procedure among healthcare providers is often below 40%. Hand hygiene is an essential procedure for all healthcare providers. It serves four different purposes in the healthcare setting. Hand hygiene prevents nosocomial infection in patients and the cross transmission of microorganisms between patients. Hand hygiene prevents contamination of the hospital environment with potential pathogens. Finally, it helps protect healthcare workers from occupational infectious diseases such as infection with the human immunodeficiency virus and hepatitis C virus. This video will demonstrate the various indications to perform hand hygiene as well as two different hand hygiene techniques, hand rubbing with an alcohol-based hand rub formulation and hand washing with soap and water. This video will also review hand hygiene equipment, the appropriate use of gloves, and policies on jewelry and fingernail hygiene. We will also review selected complications associated with hand hygiene and make suggestions about how to avoid them. Finally, we will comment on religious and cultural issues concerning hand hygiene. Hand hygiene to prepare for surgical procedures will not be addressed in this video. To perform adequate hand hygiene, you will need an alcohol-based hand rub formulation or soap, water, and drying agents such as disposable paper or cloth towels. Use alcohol-based hand rubs with proven antimicrobial efficacy these usually contain 60 to 80 percent ethanol, isopropanol, or n-propanol, or a combination of these products. These hand rubs are supplemented with emollients to protect the skin. They are available as liquid solutions or gels, sprays, or foams. Containers with these products should be easily available, within arm's reach, either at the point of care, that is within three feet of the most likely use, or should be carried in small bottles by healthcare providers for their own personal use. Soaps are detergents that can remove lipids and dirt. The antibacterial effect of soaps results from their capacity to dislodge bacteria from the skin when combined with the rinsing effect of running water. The indications for the use of hand hygiene by healthcare workers have been clearly defined by numerous organizations, including the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the World Health Organization. We will now review these indications. We will first review some of the basic principles of cross transmission of microbial pathogens. The skin and mucous membranes of every human being are colonized by various microbial species. When hospitalized, Patients gradually shed these microorganisms onto inanimate objects in their immediate surroundings, for example, onto bed linens, gowns, and bedside furniture. Hospitals contain a multitude of environments. Some of these, dubbed patient zones, consist of a patient and his or her immediate surroundings. As a result of contamination by both healthcare workers and patients, other areas of the healthcare setting, such as corridors and public areas, are also colonized with microorganisms, though to a lesser extent than patient rooms. Cross transmission of potential pathogens from one environment to another occurs through healthcare workers' hands. Hand hygiene greatly reduces the risk of cross transmission by this route. Healthcare workers must perform hand hygiene immediately before touching a patient or when entering a patient zone. This will prevent cross transmission of microbes from one patient to another. The correct moment to perform hand hygiene before touching a patient is critical. Hand hygiene should be performed close to the site of care in order to avoid recontamination should your hands inadvertently come into contact with an object distant from the patient, the doorknob, for example. Perform hand hygiene between the last hand to service contact with an object located outside the patient zone and the first within the patient zone. You should also perform hand hygiene just after touching a patient and before touching any object located outside the patient zone. This will limit the risk of germ dissemination to the healthcare environment. Even if you did not touch the patient, perform hand hygiene after touching objects located in the vicinity of the patient. For example, perform hand hygiene after touching a monitor, bedside table, or bed rail, since these may also be contaminated by the patient's microbial flora. 
There are body regions that must be kept as free of microorganisms as possible. These include zones of impaired host defense, such as breaks in skin and mucous membranes, surgical wounds, for example, or sites of invasive device insertion, such as vascular or urinary catheters and endotracheal tubes. Microorganisms that colonize the healthcare worker's hands, the patient's skin, or immediate surroundings must not be introduced into these zones of lowered immune protection. For these reasons, perform hand hygiene immediately before touching non-intact skin and before manipulating invasive devices. This will prevent colonization, which may subsequently lead to infection. Examples of critical procedures include wound care, tracheal suctioning, removing the dressing of a central venous line, giving an injection, and lumbar puncture. Finally, hand hygiene helps to protect the healthcare worker. Some patient care activities may expose healthcare workers to potentially infectious pathogens. In consequence, perform hand hygiene after contact with body fluids, mucous membranes, non intact skin, or wound dressings even in the absence of visible soiling and even when gloves have been used. There are two recognized techniques for performing hand hygiene, hand rubbing with an alcohol-based formulation and hand washing with soap and water. To perform hand rubbing, apply a palmful of hand rub formulation to a cupped hand and rub your hands together to cover all surfaces, then rub your hands again palm to palm. To reach the dorsal interdigital area of your hand, rub the fingers of one hand over the dorsum of the other and interlace your fingers. Repeat the procedure on the palmar side of your hands to reach the palmar interdigital area. To cleanse the dorsal aspect of the distal phalanges, rub the back of your fingers across the palm of the other hand with fingers interlocked. To cleanse the base of the thumb, clasp it in the palm of your other hand and rotate your thumb. Finally, decontaminate the tip of your fingers and the subungual region by rotating them on the palm of the other hand. Once dry, your hands are safe and you are ready to work. The entire procedure should take you 20 to 30 seconds. To perform hand hygiene with soap and water, wet your hands with water and apply the amount of soap necessary to cover all surfaces. Avoid using hot water as it may increase the risk of dermatitis. Rub your hands vigorously to cover all surfaces. Then complete the hand washing procedure by following the steps previously